And another indie film that I saw this week, again, I say indie film colloquially, I'm, I, I think it was picked up by Sony Pictures Classics, which I, I think is, because I think it was shopped around at, um, at film festivals. And I, I don't know exactly the mechanics for how independent film works, but pretty sure you can call this one. Anyway, it's the directorial debut of Randall Park, who many of you are probably aware of. I hate to bring this up as the first example, but I think of him when I first think of him as Asian Jim, because in that episode of The Office where Jim pulled a prank on Dwight uh, by having his friend who's Asian uh, poses him for the episode, that was Randall Park. Uh, he plays uh, Jimmy Woo in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He's been in a, a bunch of other things. He played um, Kim Jong-un in um, in the interview. The, that was the movie that uh, was uh, that got North Korea really mad because it was a movie about killing Kim Jong-un. Uh, yeah, so this is his directorial debut. And it's a, a movie about a bunch of self-centered assholes not learning their lessons and going falling for the same pitfalls over and over and over again, all while trying to hold other people to standards that they wouldn't themselves hold to. But a, as pessimistic as the movie is, it's done in a way where they're all assholes, but they're all likable characters and not in like a sitcom. -y, these guys are funny, even though like their behavior in the real world would make them sociopaths, but more just like in a human way of, you know, I, I see the redeeming qualities of these characters, but boy, they keep stepping in it over and over and over again. The movie, it's an all uh, Asian uh, main cast. And actually, the, the movie even like comments on uh, Asian American cinema, because at the start of the film, they're at a um, an Asian uh, cinema uh, festival, and the movie opens with them w walking out of a movie that's very clearly meant to be Crazy Rich Asians, and they like have a whole dialogue about how the movie is vapid and glossy and and doesn't speak to their experience at all. But also uh, counterpoint, uh, this movie will get their foot in the door to get other movies made. Basically, the movie is saying. I don't like Crazy Rich Asians, but I owe a lot to that movie existing so that I was able to make this movie. And I don't want to get too much into the into the plot details. It's, you know, kind of kind of a, 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 a dramedy. Uh, there's a lot of comedic moments to it, but it's very human characters who keep falling for the same pitfalls. The main character, Ben, he's kind of dealing with issues where he he seems to reject some of the the labels and trappings of of being uh, associated with uh, being an Asian American while still trying to hold other people to those. Like I said, a lot of the movies about hypocrisy, like his uh, girlfriend, like confronts him on having like a, a fetish for white women, even though his girlfriend is Asian. But like she sees his his uh, porn habits uh, and, and is like, it's all white girls. And I always see you looking at white girls on the street. But then like he kind of judges like uh, a, an Asian girl for dating a white guy, even though like he's, you know, he kind of has a thing for white girls himself. There are bits where he like yells at somebody for being dishonest about something while he is himself also doing that exact same thing and being dishonest about it and it's either he doesn't realize it in the moment or he knows but he's like unwilling to yell at himself for it so he's projecting it onto them and confronting them for the thing that he's doing the way that i'm describing this movie makes you sound oh wow i absolutely hate this character and i'm just sitting here going wow i absolutely hate this character but like in a very entertaining way but um i think it's uh, it, it's a very entertaining movie. I don't have a lot to say about it, but I would definitely recommend people see it. It's actually uh, quite amazing. Um, you know, it, it's commentary at the beginning about Crazy Rich Asians paving the way. Like, it's kind of true because, like, in the last year, I've seen, like, three uh, films that have had, like, primarily Asian casts that were, you know, American-made films. Like, in the past, when I was growing up, if you saw uh, Asian cinema, it was something from Hong Kong, right? But here we've got like uh, everything everywhere all at once, Joyride here with shortcomings. Uh, so it is nice to see that uh, we've got, you know, Asian Americans who are able to start telling their own stories in this. And as I gather, th this movie was based on a graphic novel of the same name. And the, the main character, Ben, where he kind of has like a cynical rejection of some of the identity politics of being Asian. Uh, apparently some of that, while it's like, directly recognized for the ways in which he's being hypocritical about it in the movie. Uh, some of the reviews of the graphic novel seem to suggest that Ben is kind of an author insert and that the uh, the author of the graphic novel uh, held similar uh, uh, positions 
about it. And so I don't know because I haven't read the graphic novel, so I don't know how much introspection he was doing in the novel and how, or how much of that was thrown in in the uh, film adaptation to acknowledge maybe some of the, the short-sightedness of the film. But, I mean, you know, the movie's called Shortcomings, so it is about people with shortcomings. So who knows? Uh, hopefully the original author was as self-aware as this movie is about people falling through the same patterns of behavior that they want to get out of them, but they just can't. Yeah, I, like I said, I think it's a pessimistic movie, but in an entertaining way. I, I think uh, I, I think it's an enjoyable film. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm trying to get my channel monetized, so your view means a lot. Don't forget to toss me a like and subscribe and ring the bell. I stream every Monday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific, so catch me live and join in on the convo. You can find all my socials in the description below, and thank you to all my patrons with a special shout out to Piftle Cakes and Ryan D. Your support means the world. Catch you next time.